Here we are in the city of Thebes, a land ruled by Oedipus, the great and powerful- Away! Kill me! Drown me in the depths of the sea! Whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Let's take it back a few pages. Basically, Oedipus was born in the city of Thebes, prophesied to kill his father and marry his mother by an oracle. When his parents found out about his curse, they pinned his feet together, where the name Oedipus, a.k.a. Swollen Foot, comes from, and gave him to a friend to throw into a forest and die. This man could not kill Swollen Foot, so he sent him to a family in Cadmus for care. As Oedipus grows, he learns about his prophecy and moves away from his foster parents, thinking he will hurt them. He comes upon the city of Thebes, where he kills a passerby, his father, the king, defeats a sphinx that was occupying the city, and saves the people. Oedipus is crowned the new king for his actions, and therefore he must marry the queen, his mother. Oedipus lives most of his life searching for the sinful human that killed the previous king, and it's not until a messenger arrives with surprising news that he learns of his true sin. If you are the man, oh, then your life is lost. Alas! All out! All known! No more concealment! O oh, light! May I never look on you again! Revealed as I am! Sinful in my begetting, sinful in marriage, sinful in shedding of blood. After he finds out this tragic information, the kingdom finds out, his wife and birth mother finds out, and she kills herself. Oh, lost and damned! This is my last and only word to you forever! Jocasta, no! <laughs> Oedipus soon finds his wife and mother dead and feels the need to stab himself. Oh, and did I mention it was the eyes? Oh, whoops, my bad. Jocasta! No! Ah! My eyes. <laughs> my, my eyes. Anyways, Oedipus blinds himself as punishment for his sins, as he believes that the news of his previous crimes caused his wife to kill herself. But he doesn't stop there. He soon finds his blindness to be an everlasting reminder of his sins, and becomes convinced that death is the only liberation from his tragedy. He asks his friend Creon to carry out his wishes, saying, Take me, and for, and for pity touch me. Take me, and have no fear. Creon agrees to care for Oedipus' children, and finally takes him up to the very mountain where Oedipus was left as a child to die. That's all, folks.